All right, guys, who's a fan of this house? Ted Lapidus, Lapidus Por Ohm. So the, recently I decided to pick up a bottle of this because I haven't worn it for a long time. And on my travels to France, I used to see this at Sephora. Never saw it here in the States for a long time. I think the last time I saw it was in the early 90s at a store that I can physically go and buy at. But as I said, I've been seeing it there and I hadn't worn it for a long time. I smelled it on previous travels and I still enjoyed what I was smelling. So got a bottle of this. I Instagrammed about it recently. And then I decided to get three flankers from this series. The Black Extreme, this one right here. The Gold Extreme, this one right here. And then the Sport, this one right here. So I like the first one obviously a lot. I love it, in fact, it's so good. One of them I like, the other two are a toss up and the last one out of the other two, I don't care for. So anyway, I'm gonna tell you about these fragrances because you can get them for really inexpensively. All four cost me around, um, somewhere around 55 to 60 dollars so it's really really inexpensive for 400 ml bottles in eau de toilette concentration anyway if you like classic men's fragrances you know from the 80s the powerhouses and you want to find out about these four then please stay tuned Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, today I'm talking about Ted Lapidus, Lapidus Por Homme. When this came out, I was only 16 years old, back in the 80s. And it was a fragrance that I really enjoyed. Um, it reminded me of Kuros, but it's actually a warmer version of Kuros. Um, if you guys are familiar with Kuros, you know what I'm talking about. Because this one actually has all the qualities of the, the Kuros fragrance, but... Um, it definitely was a sweeter take, a honeyed, ambery take on Kuros. And not so animalic, even though it reminds me of those 80s powerhouses. So it's a great scent. It still is great today. And I feel like even though we're getting an eau de toilette, we get a pretty intense, uh, you know, version of uh, that kind of a style of fragrance. So I had never smelled the flankers in the series and the flankers came out much later than the original. So I decided to take the, you know, take bite the bullet and get the fragrances. And I think I kind of made a mistake because I don't really care for one of them at all, personally. Can you guess which one? One of them is okay and then the other one is better than the other, but I still prefer the original. The original is just classic. And for the fact that I bought a tester for around 16, 15, 16 dollars, I was really happy with it. But all of them are around 20 dollars for uh, each of the fragrances. And as I said, if you like classic fragrances, it's definitely worth checking into. But if I'm gonna recommend any of them, and I'm gonna tell you about each of the fragrances, but uh, like I said, if I recommend any of them, definitely this one if you love classic fragrances. And one other one I would recommend. The rest of them you can, the, the other two you can skip. But I'll tell you all about these. Before I do that though, if this is your first time tuning into this channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Who is a fan of Ted Lapidus, Lapidus Por Ohm? How many of you have worn it? Um, if those of you that are living in Europe, can you easily buy this? I know online it's very, very inexpensive, but uh, who can go to a store and buy it rather than like ordering it online? Let me know. Because as I said, I went on my travels the last three, four years, I was seeing at some Sephora stores in France. I don't know if, if it's available everywhere. But definitely here online, it's um, around $18 for this one. My, my, uh, tester, it didn't come with a box, was uh, around $16. But this is an oriental woody fragrance launched in 1987. It is eau de toilette concentration. All four of them are eau de toilettes. I'm going to talk about this one first, then I'm going to tell you about my least favorite, then work my way towards the last one, which is going to be not as good as this, but somewhat okay. But as I said, this is an eau de toilette concentration, $18 online. You can buy them at places like Fragrance X or Fragrance Net. I have links in the info box. And this one features notes of honey, tobacco, patchouli, oak moss, amber, sandalwood, musk, lavender, lots of notes. And back in the day, they used to you know, list all the notes for us, all of it, like, uh, just the, the printout of the notes are much more extensive back then than they are today. 
because they're kind of maybe are a little secretive these days. I don't know why. But you know, this one definitely is big on the honey. It's sweet. It is honeyed and ambery at the same time. But still, once you remove the honeyed, ambery touches, the warm touches of this one, it does remind me of Kuros, but a less animalic version of Kuros. Kuros on people is uh, kind of funky and uh, musky as well. And this, as I said, does remind me of that, but still you got the warm honeyed uh, experience with this one because of the fact that it's an oriental woody fragrance. It's all it's ultra woody but sweet at the same time. It's very very honeyed. It's ambery and even though I said it's an eau de toilette. It doesn't act very thick and dense. At one time it used to be, but I think it still has pretty darn good longevity for this one in the lighter version of the version it used to be now. So it doesn't act heavy and dense as, as, as it once was. It was really, really overwhelming. Back in the 80s, fragrances were a lot thicker than now. There's an airy quality about it, but just because it's airy, it doesn't mean it's not gonna last. It does, it had a great longevity on me, and uh, I like that about it. And I, I, I love these classic fragrances. Uh, the fact that, you know, it takes me back to when I was a teenager, uh, just dabbling into the fragrances I could get my hands on because, you know, my parents weren't buying me tons of fragrances. So I was always, uh, uh, you know, stealing sprays from relatives and of course father, uh, my dad and things like that. So this is definitely highly recommended by me. If you don't know it, do check it out. It's just a great, great uh, fragrance that takes me back to high school years and a great looking bottle as well, as you can see. Very, very classic, nostalgic looking bottle. Uh, the, you know, what I like about fragrances a lot is when I look at a bottle, it'll take me to an era, and this definitely has the 80s, the late 80s era all over it, and that's what I like about it. So, so, so good, this one. Uh, I highly recommend it for the $18 it costs, and that's Ted Lapidus, Lapidus Pour Homme. One thing I forgot to mention is a Lapidus, or Ted Lapidus, is a fashion house, but I don't think they do fashion anymore, and... Uh, I don't think so. And the other thing is with this particular fragrance, one other thing about this brand uh, as a brand, and I don't think this was the deal with it when it first launched, and the fact that they're not a fashion house anymore. Don't quote me on that. I don't think they design any fashion anymore, but this is listed under Jacques Bogart. Any of you that are fans of this house know this house, then I think they are the distributor or the brand that's the parent company of uh, Ted Lapidus. Anyway, that's Lapidus Port Homme, my favorite of the bunch, definitely the one that I recommend from this one. If you don't buy any of the rest of them, you'll be fine. But just keep in mind, you gotta be into these kind of fragrances. If you're not, you're not going to like this. If you have dabbled into the classics, you'll love it. That's what I say. If you haven't, if you're used to the fragrances of now, this is going to be so different for you. Be warned. So as I said, when I got this, I decided to pick up three others because I looked it up and I said, this was so good. At one time it was much better, but it's still good today. I'm gonna buy up flankers because I haven't looked into this house for a long time. Let's see what flankers there are. And I found three flankers, the black extreme, the gold extreme, and then finally the sport. So my least favorite of the bunch is the sport. You don't even need to go close to this fragrance. It acts, it's absolutely not worth it. I just cannot tolerate the smell of this and I don't want to wear it. So sadly, uh, I have a love-hate relationship with sport fragrances. I usually don't like them. There are a few exceptions to that rule, but I really love the bottle. I fell in love with the bottle, so I thought I'd take a crack at it, but I'm very, very disappointed in this one, and I'd never recommend this one. This one came out in 2015. It's considered a woody aquatic fragrance. Once again, it's Eau de Toilette, and I found it currently online for $18. Notes for this one are marine notes, geranium, basil, rosemary, orange blossom, leather, patchouli. It doesn't really smell that good. In fact, it doesn't smell great at all. It's just a bad, bad recreation of something that wants us to remind us of this, whereas they give us something modern, they're giving us a sport version, but they've created something that's really, really bad and doesn't smell great. I don't wanna wear this one at all. Um, it's synthetic and really, really, I don't, I don't wanna to get too negative about it, but it reminds me of a public restroom that's just been cleaned. Do you know that smell? 
That's what this reminds me of. It's really, really bad. It's awful, actually. Don't want to go near it. But I love the bottle, so I, I want to keep the bottle. But I don't recommend this. But in the end, though, it's fresh. It's spicy. Very, very aquatic. Marine. Smelling very. You can smell the sea. Very woody at the same time. And there are some, you know, warm touches in there. There's some floral touches. But mostly I would call this a fresh, spicy, marine fragrance. Well, I would call it a woody as well because it definitely is on the woody side, but it's, it's, it's fresh. The woods are not as heavy as the freshness is, but I just don't like the smell. So that's Ted Lapidus, Lapidus Pour Homme Sport, my least favorite of the bunch. When I was testing these two out, they were competing with one another, but when I got deeper into them, I started hating this one. I don't hate it as much as the Sport, but I don't love it. So Ted, I thought I would love this one because the notes were really, really great. And in the end, it turned out that this was not my favorite. But Ted Lapidus, Lapidus Pour Homme Gold Extreme came out in 2015, just like this one. I guess they released two fragrances that year. It's considered an oriental spicy. Concentration, once again, is Eau de Toilette. And the, the fragrance currently selling for around $21 for 100 So these prices are fluctuating all the time. So... Uh, Currently, that's what the price is. And this one has notes of cinnamon, pink pepper, vanilla, leather, nutmeg, vetiver. Um, very synthetic smell. The notes seem like it's going to be great for me. I'm going to love them, enjoy them. But I just didn't like the way the fragrance um, developed on me. It actually clashed with my chemistry, and I didn't really care for it. But I love these kind of notes, some of my favorite notes, but this just did not work for me. But I didn't hate it as this month. This one. As I said, this one reminds me of a freshly cleaned public restroom, but this one at least had a little something going for it, but I just didn't uh, love it as much as I wanted to. And, I, and as I said, once again, the notes seem like they're going to be excellent notes, but in the end, it just became a very synthetically, uh, not very pleasant smelling uh, fragrance. So sadly, this is a disappointment as well. And one other thing I want to say about the Ted Lapidus, Lapidus Pour Homme Gold Extreme, it's metallic. Something in there, which is weird because it shouldn't go metallic on me uh, from the notes. Something in here is causing it to go very metallic and not so warm and spicy, which I really, really love that kind of style. So just a complete disappointment with this one. But once again, I'll say I don't hate it as much as the sport, but I also don't love it. But this this next one, the Ted Lapidus Lapidus Pour on Black Extreme, was actually fairly good on me. This one came out in 2012. It's considered an oriental fougere, although yeah, I would call it an oriental fougere, but it's more of an ozonic fougere. Eau de toilette concentration once again. And this one currently is selling for a 100 ml bottle for $20 once again. So, inexpensive. I don't love it as much as the original, obviously, but I think this one will do. This has notes of violet leaf, tonka beans, orange blossom, woods, labdanum, saffron, and black pepper. So, once again, it's an ambery experience. Both of them are orientals, both of these. But I thought this would go metallic on me, but this went metallic on me. So it's just weird. Did they switch juices on me? I'm not 100% sure why. But this one does warm up and it gets ozonic on me. The violet leaf, once again, is that cucumber-like, the inside of a cucumber, wet kind of gelatinous kind of uh, note that gives you this kind of like watery effect in the fragrance. But all along with all the warm notes of the labdanum and the woods and the, the spiciness of the black pepper. So in the end, does it smell like this? All, for, all the fragrances have somewhat of a hint of this, but they're completely different than this. And this one in the end, this is an oriental. This is an oriental as well, but this one, as I said, it's a fougere according to my research, but it doesn't really act like a traditional fougere with uh, the lavender. But there are tonka beans in the base, and I think in the place of the lavender, they've got the violet leaf in here. So they're kind of substituting that with the lavender, and they're giving us their idea of a fougere. So I liked it. I did not love it. This still is my favorite. All three of these I could do without, but I hated the sport. Didn't care for the gold. I'm okay with the black, but I'm in love with the original. The original is hands down amazing. I'm glad I was able to sample these. I'm going to have to sell all three of those. I'll definitely keep this, but uh, this will bring back lots of memories. And again, if you're into the idea of classic men's fragrances, this definitely needs to be added to a collection, especially for the fact that this is so inexpensive. 16 bucks for a tester. See, this is a tester because it has all the info on the back. Did not get a box for that one, but 
the regular one was around eighteen dollars anyway, so it's it's inexpensive uh, to begin with. So I, I recommend this one. It definitely deserves to be in a collection of classic men's fragrances, even though it's been reformulated, even though it's not exactly as dense and intense as it once was. I still think it smells great today. If you like Kuros, you'll definitely love this one. But you gotta love the sweeter notes because this one does get sweet in addition to the Kuros-like, uh, you know, smell and quality. Anyway, Ted Lapidus. Poor Ohm is really, really great. The rest you can just toss in the garbage. I'm sorry to say, but I don't care for them. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Do you like the original Ted Lapidus Poor Ohm? Do you like the other ones I spoke about? As I said, the black one's okay. Gold and uh, Sport, no. But maybe you're a fan. It's just, for me, they, they don't work. Uh, and I don't want to offend anyone if they like it, but it's just not working for me. Um, I'm, I'm fine with just keeping the original. But let me know if you're fans of it. Are there other flankers of this line? Put a comment down so I can find out because I don't know if there are. These are the only four I found. And I'm happy to have tested them out. It did cost me a bit, but I was able to share it with everyone so they can find out. Either way, if you have the money, I would recommend getting them and trying them. But if you're not with a lot of money, skip everything except for this one. As I said, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Otherwise, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.